The work of one of the most celebrated artists in all of France and indeed the world is located right here in Baltimore and you can experience it now. Katie Rothkoff is the senior curator at Baltimore Museum of Art. Well, um, Ari Matisse is one of the greatest artists of the 20th century, and I'm very privileged to be able to work with, his, uh, with this collection and with his work, uh, and have for the last 21 years, uh, on and off, and it really is what distinguishes the BMA in many ways, and particularly the Department of European Painting and Sculpture, for which, uh, where I work, this is really the collection that, that stands out. The Cone Collection is just extraordinary. Christopher Bedford says working with Katie over the last five years to make this exhibit a reality has been an incredible honor. It's searching, it's scholarly, it's completely unique to this museum. There's no other museum in the world that could um, stage this exhibition from uh, permanent holdings, impossible. And I think Katie's command is both um, intimate and scholarly at the same time. The exhibition tells a story that is, I think, pretty extraordinary and again, unique in the context of American museums. That story is of two sisters from right here in Baltimore, Bolton Hill to be exact. The Cone sisters were Clara Bell Cone, who was from the first generation of, of female medical doctors in this country, and her younger sister, Etta Cone. And the collection actually began when Etta Cohn purchased five paintings in 1898 by the American Impressionist Theodore Robinson. And by the end of their collecting, um, after the death of the younger sister, they had over 3,000 things that came to the museum. And for years, uh, with, with colleagues, we have long discussed the difference between the two sisters. Who bought what, who liked what, and it's sort of an internal, um, it was sort of an internal investigation because it's so fun to think about people's choices, their taste, how their tastes changed over time. Etta Cohn first met Matisse in 1906 and was a great patron of his work and a good friend for 43 years until her death in 1949. They were such good friends, in fact, that Matisse himself came to Baltimore once to visit. He was in the United States working on a big project outside of Philadelphia and he decided to come to Baltimore uh, to visit Etta Cohn uh, the year after the death of her sister. And for the first time, he saw what the sisters had collected up to that point. He saw works that he had made, but he also saw works that his colleagues had made, that his artistic mentors had made. And he realized that if he played his cards right, he could have a major presence in a museum in the United States. And boy, was he right. But what is so interesting about this collection is the process on display as well. He liked to show you how he got to the end result, opting not to cover changes in his paintings, but expose them. And the same is certainly true with his drawings. His charcoal drawings are amazing in that way, where he shows you the erasing and the changes in the pose. And it really, it's one of the things that makes him so, so extraordinary is that freedom of showing you how he got from point A to point B. And we are still learning from him even now. In fact, the BMA will soon be a hub of further exploration of Matisse's work. We decided long overdue to conceive uh, and raise the necessary money for a center for the study of uh, Matisse's work. So the Ruth Armada Center for Matisse Studies, which will be directed by Katie Rothkoff, opens uh, in December. And it will be, the intent there is really a brain trust. It's, a, it's less an exhibition space and more a space where scholars from all around the world come, use our holdings to generate exhibitions, publications, new scholarship, looking at Matisse, looking at his legacy, perhaps looking at unlikely avenues of um, pursuit, things that we haven't seen before in the study of the artist's work. So Katie will direct that activity, but there will be a sort of really polyphonic array of voices from everywhere uh, using our holdings to advance knowledge around arguably the greatest artists of the 20th century. I think this exhibit is for everybody. Anyone who's interested in art in general, I think, can find something that would appeal to them, whether it's the story of Sisters from Baltimore, who met one of the most important artists of the 20th century when he was still young, uh, and were there at the beginning and, and saw his work unfold. Uh, if you're interested in, in painting or sculpture, works on paper, it really sort of uh, is a show that I hope appeals to everybody. The exhibit runs through January 2nd and you can get your tickets, just go to artbma.org. We'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this, stay tuned.